The night of May 28, 1998 became the scene of a shocking tragedy that would forever tarnish the world of comedy. Time. But first you'll make a public statement supporting me, which I wrote myself. Phil Hartman, the genius behind countless laughs on Saturday Night Live and The Simpsons, was killed in his sleep. The perpetrator, his own wife. But what led to this unthinkable act? How did a life so bright turn so dark? The answers lie in the shadows of fame, behind the closed doors of a family in crisis. Phil Hartman, born on September 24, 1948 in Brantford, Ontario, Canada, made a lasting mark on comedy that few can match. Phil was the fourth of eight children in a devout Catholic family. His family's roots stretched across Germany, Ireland, and England, but it was the move to the United States when Phil was just 10 that set the stage for his future stardom. Growing up in Connecticut and Southern California, Phil embraced his new life, later sealing his bond with America by obtaining citizenship in the early 90s. Well, I just want to mingle with the American people, talk with some real folks, maybe get a Diet Coke or something. Before the spotlight, Phil's creativity flourished at California State University, where he studied graphic design. His artistic talent shone through in his work as a graphic artist, designing iconic album covers for bands like Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, and Poco. But Phil's true calling was comedy, leading him to join the Groundlings in 1975. It was here that Phil's comedic genius began to emerge. Collaborating with Paul Rubens, he co-created the character Pee Wee Herman, showcasing his knack for unforgettable characters. In 1986, he joined Saturday Night Live. In over eight seasons, he became the show's backbone, known as the glue for his ability to hold the cast together. His portrayals of Frank Sinatra, Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, and many others left audiences in stitches, cementing his place as a comedy legend. Bye-bye. Back to work! Beyond SNL, Phil's voice became iconic through characters like Troy McLure and Lionel Hutz on The Simpsons. His transition to news radio as the arrogant Bill McNeil showcased his range and continued to win over audiences until his tragic death in 1998. Phil Hartman's life off the screen had its share of ups and downs. He got married three times. His first marriage was to Gretchen Lewis in 1970, but they split up in 1972. Then, in 1982, he married Lisa Strain, a real estate agent, but this marriage also ended in 1985. Phil also didn't have any kids from these marriages. Phil Hartman, with his magnetic charm and incredible talent, started making waves and landing more gigs. From voice roles to appearances in movies, his career was on the rise. He even teamed up with fellow groundling Paul Rubens to bring the unforgettable Pee Wee Herman to life. But in 1985, Phil's life took a turn when he met Bryn Omdahl on a blind date. Little did anyone know, she would become his third wife and, in a tragic twist of fate, the one to end his life. The roots of this tragedy were planted well before that night, marking a dark chapter in the story of a comedy legend. Knock your head off with a baseball bat. <laughs> what number is Ed McMahon? I need some Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon is now number two. Bren, a former model and aspiring actress, and Phil got married later that year. They had two children together, a son named Sean Edward in 1989, and a daughter named Bergen Annika in 1992. But things weren't easy at home. Bren was struggling with sadness and drug problems, which made their marriage tough. As Phil's career got better, Bren felt left behind, which made her even more upset. Phil tried to help by giving her jobs and even thought about quitting his work to be with her. Their problems got worse, and on May 27, 1998, a seemingly normal evening took a turn towards the unthinkable. Bryn Hartman, after enjoying dinner with a friend who noted she seemed in a good frame of mind, returned home. However, the calm of the night was shattered by an argument between Bryn and her husband, Phil. The dispute was rooted in a deeply troubling incident. Phil was furious after discovering Bryn had hit their daughter while under the influence of alcohol. He issued a stern ultimatum. 
If Brynn turned to drugs again or harmed their children, he would leave her. With tensions high, Phil returned to the sanctuary of their bedroom, seeking solace in sleep. But peace was far from reach. In the dark early hours before 3 a.m., a shadow fell over the Hartman household. Bryn, fueled by alcohol and cocaine, stepped into the bedroom. She fired three shots, one between Phil's eyes, another in his throat, and a final bullet to his chest. The laughter that once filled their home was silenced forever by a series of decisions that led to a tragic end. In a twist no one saw coming, Bryn Hartman, reeling from her actions, rushed to her friend Ron Douglas's place. She dropped the bombshell. She had just killed Phil. Ron, familiar with Bryn's dramatics, initially couldn't wrap his head around the truth. The reality hit hard when they got back to the Hartman house. There was Phil, unmistakably gone, lying in their bed. Ron didn't hesitate. He dialed 911 right away, but by the time help arrived, Bryn had barricaded herself in the bedroom and, with the same gun, tragically ended her own life. Bryn Hartman, I got your message. Phil's just been working like crazy and... If you'd like to stay updated with more stories like this one, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Your support keeps the memories of legends like Phil alive. After the tragedy, Phil Hartman's children, now grown up, were taken from their home. They moved to the Midwest to live with Bryn's sister, Kathy, seeking a semblance of normalcy after the storm. The news sent shockwaves through the entertainment world. The Simpsons shut down rehearsals, the Groundlings canceled shows, and tributes to Phil Hartman flooded in, a proof to the love and respect that he had garnered. In a world where he had brought so much laughter, the silence was deafening. This tragic event left their two children without parents and ended the life of a man who had brought so much joy to others. Even 25 years after the tragic end of Phil Hartman, his legacy of laughter lives on. His iconic voices of Troy McClure and Lionel Hutz on The Simpsons still bring smiles to fans around the globe. And who could forget his role as the hilariously vain news anchor Bill McNeil on news radio? Please, don't make a scene. We're not in New York. We're not? You're kidding. Gee, and I almost mistook the Museum of Yarn for the Guggenheim. It was a role that seemed tailor-made for Hartman's unique ability to deliver lines with a perfectly smarmy twist. Before the fame, Hartman was just an introverted graphic designer who stumbled into the spotlight. His big break came unexpectedly when he wowed the Groundlings improv group as a volunteer from the audience, leading to an invitation to join them. But now he's a lawyer. On stage, Hartman was a natural, but off stage, he sought solace in the quiet. Lisa Jarvis, Hartman's second wife, reflected on the complex man that she knew, describing him as a blend of two personas, the creative mind eager to draw, write and invent, and the private man who preferred the shadows to the spotlight. Seeing Phil at the Groundlings was Phil being truly Phil, she said. Over time, it became clear that Hartman's public personas were both a shield and a true reflection of his multifaceted personality. His ability to navigate between his public brilliance and private introspection made him not just a memorable entertainer, but a deeply intriguing individual whose impact remains undiminished by time. Women! are exploited in relationships <laughs> because there's a lot of men out there who lie to them. In a twist, Bren's brother took legal action against Pfizer, the pharmaceutical giant, blaming the antidepressant Zoloft for the tragic events. He claimed that the medication clouded Bren's judgment, leading her to commit the unthinkable acts against Phil and herself. I did file a lawsuit against Pfizer alleging that the use of Zoloft caused my sister to not know what she was doing when she shot her husband. And when she came out of that, she shot herself, he explained. The lawsuit concluded with Pfizer settling for $100,000, though Zoloft remains available as a prescription antidepressant. Amidst the legal battles and the family's efforts to heal, a never-before-seen interview with Phil Hartman surfaced, shedding light on his reflections about life's fragility. Recorded the same year of his untimely death, Phil shared, 
I think in my old age, I've come to realize just how precious everything is, and I try to value the many blessings that have been bestowed upon me. But there's also the sense of vulnerability if fortune took a turn for the worse, and that you live with the awareness that anything could happen in this world. These words, echoing from the past, offer a glimpse into the mind of a man who cherished life's gifts, yet was acutely aware of his own uncertainties. As we reflect on the life and legacy of Phil Hartman, we're reminded of the laughter he brought into our lives. His work continues to inspire and entertain, leaving a lasting impact on comedy and beyond. So what are your favorite Phil Hartman moments or characters? Share your memories in the comments section down below and let's celebrate the incredible talent and joy that he shared with the world. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.